We are in One Amazing Elephant, pages 156 to 177. How to save an elephant. Slumped on the porch with Henry Jack, I feel drained, as if the funeral sucked all the life out of me. My eyes hurt from crying. I'm tired and my heart pings lonely with the missing of my grandpa. We slurp red popsicles and Henry Jack's lips are stained. Luckily, the sky is cloudy and we don't have to worry as much about sunburn for Henry Jack. Queenie Grace huddles in the yard, back on the chain because she already tried to run back to the grave. Queenie Grace bawls and bellows. The sound booms like thunder. I never heard such a terrible noise, comments Henry Jack. I nod. It's horrible, I say. It goes right through me. Queenie Grace's eyes eyes us and stops making the sounds. She just stares, her eyes meeting mine. And something about those eyes make me care a lot about this elephant. It's like there's an invisible thread between us, pulling, connecting, joining. I can't believe my grandma chained her again, I comment. I know Henry Jack agrees, but she really did have to do something to keep her there. I think she'd just keep running back to Bill, to the cemetery. She's so sad, I say. I know, it's like you can feel her soul, right? Nothing like the soul of an elephant. It's big and fluffy and floaty, kind of like those clouds. I look up at the sky. Gray storm clouds have gathered and they're shifting and changing shapes before our eyes. Trulia appears at the screen door, a bag of chips in her hand. You two need a snack? She asks. No thanks, I say. I'm not hungry, Henry Jack says. I know, me neither, Trulia says. Who feels like eating on a day like this, right? She goes back inside. I feel bad for her, Henry Jack says. She lost her dad. I know how that feels. Yeah, I know how it feels too. The, the losing feelings. By the way, says Henry Jack, you did a good job at the funeral. A good job? How can you do a good job at the funeral? Well, like you were so polite to everybody and you helped together and stayed strong for your grandma. My dad taught me to be polite, I reply. And I taught myself how to hold it together. As far as being strong, not so much. I could ball from now till fly my flight to home if I let myself. I stare at Queenie Grace, then close my eyes for a few seconds. The shape of the elephant remains on the back of my eyelids. Did you ever notice how you can stare at something? I said to Henry Jack. Then close your eyes and have it stay there on your eyelids. Of course, Henry Jack says. Hasn't everybody? I don't know, but now I have an elephant in my eyes. What's better than, than an elephant in the room? You know, like how they say there's an elephant in the room when nobody talks about the obvious bad thing? I nod. Julie and Grandma have moved into the kitchen and their voices strain out through the screen window. I'm afraid that we might have to send her away, says my grandmother. It kills me to say that because Bill would have never stood for it. But I don't know how we're going to feed an elephant now that we don't have the act anymore. The account's very low and the electric bills do, plus the lot rent. Where would she go? asked Julia. Henry Jack looks at me. They're thinking of putting Queenie Grace in an old folks home, he says low. An old folks home for elephants. Where there's that, well, there's that nice new elephant sanctuary up near Tampa, Grandma says. I've heard they take great care of them there and they're free to roam, make friends and enjoy their later years. See, Henry Jack mutters, told you, that's what happened to this other elephant. I remember from when I was little, named Thunder. But why not make some money? Asked Julia. Sell her to another circus or something. No, Grandma says. She had her career and it was with Bill. And anyway, didn't you know that even Ringling Brothers stopped their elephant acts? They realized that not all elephants enjoy the work of being in a circus. Queenie Grace loved her job, but she loved it because it was with Bill. It wouldn't be fair to team her up with somebody new at this age. Plus, I couldn't trust just anybody. I want her to be sure that she's loved and that somebody takes good care of her. Well, how do we know the elephant sanctuary will take her? Julia asks. I called them yesterday, says Grandma. That was one call I didn't want to make, but sometimes a person just has no choice. There's a sound of the chip bag being ripped open, crunching. We just can't afford Queenie Grace anymore, Grandma says. Well, yeah, you're right, I 
guess. Plus, she has been acting out a bit, we have to admit, Julia adds. I know that Queenie Grace is grieving, says Grandma, her voice breaking like drop china. So am I. I understand that. And now I'm not only grieving for Bill, but for her too. She's been with us for a long time. I, I love that elephant like I love a child. I think that maybe you love her more than you love me, Julia says. Nobody speaks. Silence falls heavy as storm clouds gather in a threatening gang over Gibtown, over Grandma's trailer, over me and Henry Jack and Queenie Grace. Nighttime again, and Henry Jack and I are lying flat on our backs, staring at the quiet sky in our usual spot. Queenie Grace is sprawled nearby, an aura of sadness hanging over her large body. I think she knows, Henry Jack says. She knows what's going on. A screen door squeaks, and Mike steps out of Charlie's place. He doesn't know we're here. He joins Charlie in the yard, and they both light cigars. So, Mike says, here's the plan. The old lady says she's sending the elephant to a sanctuary over in Tampa on account of how she can't afford it anymore. How do you know? Charlie asks. Julia told me. When is it happening? Charlie asks. Probably by Saturday, says Mike, but I have a plan. Let's hear it. We load up the elephant while the old lady and Julia are sleeping, says Mike, and then we split the money three ways. You, me, our buddy Gus. Takes three to swipe an elephant. Henry Jack looks at me and I look at him as we absorb the words leaking through the night. They're going to steal Queenie Grace, I whisper. Not if I can help it, Henry Jack mutters. He and I lock eyes, and I know we're thinking the same thing. We've got to get her out of here, I state. We've got to save Queenie Grace. We're quiet until Mike and Charlie go back inside. We need to tell Grandma, I whisper. No, Henry Jack whispers back. Then she'll just send Queenie Grace away even quicker to keep her away from those two. So, I whisper, what are we going to do? Run away, he whispers. We'll take Queenie Grace. But how can you run away with an elephant? Beats me, says Henry Jack, but we'll figure it out. I don't know, I say. Doesn't sound like much of a plan. Sometimes it's best not to plan, responds Henry Jack. Plus, we don't have much time. Queenie Grace's life is at stake. I know, but geez, I don't know about running away. My dad would freak out, plus my grandma. And Trulia, she'll be so mad. I just can't get used to you calling her Trulia, says Henry Jack. That's her name. But she's your mom. You need to call her mom. If she ever earns it, I say, I'll do that. Huh, says Henry Jack. Never heard of that. I shrug. So what does she have to do? To earn it. I take a deep breath. Queenie Grace watches us, eavesdropping. Well, I say, to begin with, maybe she can explain why she left and went. Henry Jack snorts. Some things in life, he says, flipping back his hair, just can't be explained. The next morning, Friday, we're making a list, or at least Henry Jack is, how to save an elephant. Things to take is the title. One, water bottles. Two, food. Stuff for us and Queenie Grace, too. Three, sunburn stuff. Four, soap and washcloths. Five, manual for mahouts. Six, blankets. Seven, change of clothes. Eight, cell phones. Nine, chargers. And ten, toothbrushes and toothpaste. We're at Henry Jack's house, and he's filling... Sorry, filling four backpacks with things from the list. I think we need more backpacks, I say. We need, like, rolling suitcases or something. Oh, like, that won't be obvious, says Henry Jack. One elephant and two kids with rolling luggage. Well, how are we going to carry all this stuff? Queenie Grace will help, Henry Jack says. We'll use this Hoda thing that I know I stored in your grandma's pink shed. What's a howda? It's one of those satellite thingies that people use to ride an elephant. Henry Jack explains, but we can use it to carry some stuff. And how will we get it on Queenie Grace's back? Duh, says Henry Jack, we'll use a ladder. This all sounds like a stupid plan to me. No, Henry Jack said, it's the opposite of stupid. It's smart. We'll save Queenie Grace. 
Henry Jack, I say, I agree we have to save her, but this running away thing might not be a good idea. It might be impossible. Nothing, says Henry Jack, cramming a rolled up blanket into a third backpack is impossible. Queenie Grace hates to feel hate. I hate these chains. I have never felt hate this strong before. Hate is a bad feeling. Nighttime has fallen and Violet and Julie are sleeping. I smell their sleep and I hear their breath. I always liked the sound of Bill's sleep. Now that he no longer breathes, I miss the air from his nose, from his mouth. I just miss Bill. I can now smell the girl Lily and Henry Jack, the alligator boy. They do not sleep and their breath huffs heavy. Henry Jack and Lily come closer and each one holds bags on their back. Each one wears a cap the color of night and clothes like nighttime sky. They are trying not to be seen and they are trying to be quiet. Their feet are not bare and I hear their shoe bottoms scoot across the dew coated grass. The alligator boy carries something, a sharp hacksaw. He kneels down as if to pray and then he begins to saw away at the, my chains. I raise my trunk. I must be quiet. I must be still. I must wait for Henry Jack to break the chains. I no longer feel hate. Running away. Henry Jack leads the way. I try to be silent, and I guess Queenie Grace is being as quiet as possible for such a gigantic creature. She moves fast, swinging her trunk back and forth, a little grin on her lips. If you could call them lips, that is. Her breathing snuffles loud in the night. Her weight moves the earth. It looks like the swivels her hips, as if she's doing an elephant's tango. We actually managed to get the howdah on her back with the help of one of Grandpa's old stepladders. She looks sassy, I say. Happy. She is happy, Henry Jack responds. Aren't you? Not exactly. There's got to be a better way to save Queenie Grace. Well, when you come up with it, says Henry Jack, you just let me know. We pass trailers all lit up with Christmas lights and others dark and quiet. I catch a glimpse of a lady wearing a long white nightgown in a lit up window and another in a row. It smells like summertime. We pass by the abandoned Ferris wheel silhouetted against the nighttime sky. And there's a spooky sound of old fashioned carousel music coming from out of nowhere. That old carousel actually works. I whispered to Henry Jack. Sometimes says Henry Jack. It just starts up all by itself. That's creepy, I say. Maybe it's haunted. Well, ghosts aren't what we need to be afraid of, says Henry Jack. It's some of the living people who are the scariest, like Charlie and Mike. Okay, I say, you're freaking me out. Let's change the subject now. Okay, we'll chat about running away. Or not. We walk and walk, Queenie Grace lumbering between us, out of Gibtown, until there's Hard highway between our feet. Jeez, I say, that was easy. Nothing's easy, says Henry Jack. It's not like it's over yet. Not over till the fat lady sings, Mom always says. Queenie Grace makes a little sound, as if she's laughing. She has a great sense of humor, I say. That's what my mom always says, too, replies Henry Jack. She says Queenie Grace is the most human elephant she's ever met. It's true, I say. She's more human than some people I know. Henry Jack snickers. True, he says. So where are we going anyway? I ask. You're too full of questions, Henry Jack says. Sometimes it's better to just follow the stars without talking so much, like the wise men, especially when you're with somebody who knows what he's doing and knows where he's going. You're awfully sure of yourself, I say. Hey, says Henry Jack, when you're born with an alligator skin, you learn how to be strong. We trudge on and on, off the highway and onto a dark fairy tale trail through woods. Briars scratch my arms, limbs snap at my face. I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I'm scared, I'm hot. I'm wheezing, breathing sure isn't easy. I might die. Queenie Grace looks at me as if she's reading my mind. I feel the nuzzle of her trunk against my leg. She reminds me of Donna on the airplane just giving me a little touch to let me know that everything will be okay. Queenie Grace is starting to feel almost like a lady to me, an old, quiet, and kind lady, maybe a spiritual advisor like Miss Donna. 
Maybe Queenie Grace is a human communicator. She figures out the souls of people. Queenie Grace is old, but she loves to feel alive. I am romping, happy to be free. I love being here in the woods, by the creek, under the moon and stars. I love the crunching beneath my feet, the snap of twigs. I love the musky smell of the forest. Being free, being with my friends makes me feel alive. I finally feel fully alive for the first time since Bob died, Bill died. We are running away, they say. I do not know exactly what this means, but for now, it feels good. And that is why I try to ignore the smell of the smoke, of the fire, of the danger smoldering nearby. The men with fire. So what's the plan, I ask. I'm really feeling like this isn't such a good idea. You worry too much, Lily Rose, says Henry Jack. Look at the bright side. So far, everything has gone just fine. So far, I replied, we've only gone like an hour. I don't need this kind of negativity, Henry Jack says, and then he snickers. You need to relax. It's not very relaxing to run away with an elephant in the middle of the night, I say. What exactly are we going to do anyway? Hmm, I'm thinking of a place where we can maybe hide her here in the woods, at least until we tell our, your grandma what we heard Mike and Charlie say. And then we talked her into giving it another try with Queenie Grace after calling the cops on Mike and Charlie. That's not going to work. And anyway, how long can you hide an elephant? Nervousness gnaws away at me. Henry Jack says nothing. He just walks with his head bent forward and down. Seriously, I say, we can't exactly hide her. She's enormous. Plus, like, she has to be fed a lot and watered and... Henry Jack stops walking. He looks at me. You may be right, he says. Maybe we do need a better plan. So can we go back and talk about this some more? Maybe tell Grandma what's going on? He sighs. All right, he says. You talk me into it. But then he put his nose up in the air like a bloodhound. I smell cigar smoke, Henry Jack hisses. I have a nose for Charlie, the fire eater. He's somewhere close. I bet you a million dollars. I don't smell it, I whisper. There's a breeze and leaves rustles on the trees. It's spooky here in the woods at night. We're at least a mile from Grandma's place, and we've been walking for ages. We forgot to bring a flashlight. I smell it, Henry Jack says. I can smell Charlie a mile away. He pats Queenie Grace's back. Still, he says gently to the elephant, be still, Queenie Grace. She obeys, standing motionless as an elephant can stand moving nothing but her ears. I feel the slight breeze from the flapping of those big ears. Henry Jack tips back his head, listening, sniffling. Okay, he whispers. My radar nose has it figured out. I smell campfire smoke, plus Charlie's cigar. We need to get the heck out of here. Follow me. My heart races. I'm dizzy. Walk as lightly as you can, Henry Jack instructs. That means you too, Queenie Grace. Henry Jack, Queenie Grace, and I try to walk lightly in the direction of my grandma's place, clenching our teeth as twigs snap and crack beneath our feet. Shh, he says. Dang, we're going in the wrong direction. My nose failed me for once. What do you mean, I whisper. My heart hammers in my ears. We three come to a stop. Branches brush against my face. See? Through the trees and the leaves, there's a flicker of fire orange, a campfire flaming high. It's him, Henry Jack whispers. He's eating fire, see? I do see. Charlie wears his cowboy hat. He tips his head back, swallows the fire. Mike's here too, and another man we don't know. Must be Gus, Henry Jack whispers. The Gus he mentioned. So how much money will we take? Asks the stranger. A lot, Charlie replies. Plenty, more money than I've seen in a heck of a long time. More money than we've seen, Mike says. Split three ways, remember? Henry Jack nudges me. He points and mouths the word, run. We do. Henry Jack and Queenie Grace and me, we run as fast as we can, as far as we can, thundering through the forest, and then we stop to catch our breath at the edge of the woods. Queenie Grace is trembling. Don't worry, says Henry Jack to the elephant. We'll take 
care of you, girl. We'll protect you. Saving you was our number one priority. Something buzzes around my face. A mosquito or a bee. I didn't think they came out at night. I slap it away, and next thing you know, Queenie Grace turns and stampedes right back into the woods, crashing through the branches. Queenie Grace! Henry Jack yells. Stop! He keeps going. We've got to get her, Henry Jack says. Come on! Queenie Grace tramples loudly through the woods, right in the direction of the three men in the campfire. We chase after her. Stop! hisses Henry Jack. Stop, Queenie Grace! But the elephant doesn't listen. We run fast as we can after her, but she just keeps on going, and the next thing you know, we're at the fire. The flames light Queenie Grace's face. Hey! yells Mike. There it is! What the heck? The man Gus jumps up. He lunges for Queenie Grace. So do Mike and Charlie, the three of them all going at once for Queenie Grace. Three grown men against one old elephant. I draw in a breath, terrified. I try to grab Henry Jack, but he's moving too fast. Henry Jack leaps forward, jumping on Mike's back. Get off me, Mike yells. The man Gus raises his fist, and I see three letters tattooed into his knuckles. G-U-S, Gus. Don't hit the kid, Charlie snouts. What do you want, to get arrested? I'm screaming and screaming and finally realize that I do have a phone for emergencies. And this is an emergency. But then I remember the phone is only for text messages. You can't exactly text 911. Queenie Grace knocks Gus to the ground with her trunk. Henry Jack scrambles up. And so does Mike. Get him! Mike yells. Charlie wraps an arm around Henry Jack's waist, holding him tight. Queenie Grace whacks Charlie with her trunk. And then she puts one foot on the man Gus, pinning him to the ground, protecting Henry Jack and protecting herself and protecting me. You can tell that she's not placing much weight on Gus. She's just keeping him down. She keeps him there, on the ground, in the woods.